Greetings citizens. Hey you, hey you beautiful creepy human being you. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's true crime video. I'm so happy we could meet like this. I'm so happy that somehow in all of this that we're forced to deal with on the day today, today you and I were able to find each other on this crazy little planet that we call home. My name is Brittany or Bratterstein, whichever you prefer, and today we're going to be discussing the murder of 22-year-old Tyler Lane. But before we get started, if you have not yet had the pleasure please make sure to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out a new video every single week, sometimes two a week, and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you, specifically you, but I can only do that if you join the Brat Pack and become one of us. All right, let's go ahead and get into this video. So this video is on a case that is actually pretty recent. I learned about this case because I have this newsletter that comes into my email. I have no idea how I got signed up for it, and I can't even remember the name of it, but it sends me just random news in the world. It's not always true crime related, but oftentimes it is. And this case was emailed to me. It was on like the list of cases that were emailed to me, and I was like, what in the world? Because when I read the headline and I started looking into it, I didn't realize how recent it was. First off, it's actually from this year. But as I started to read it and started to see how the media was portraying the case, which basically a lot of the headlines are saying things like, egging prank goes wrong and it leaves one man dead and three teens arrested. I was like, I need to look into this further. And once I looked into all the details that we have so far that have been released, I was kind of like, I felt like I was left with more questions than answers, and I feel like there is a lot more to this than has been released thus far. So today I'm going to tell you the entire story. I read all the things so that you do not have to, and at the end of this video I'm going to ask you a question of the day. I'm going to give it to you now so you have it kicking around in your brain as we go through the details of this case, but of course I want you to answer once you have something to go on. But the question of the day is this. What do you think happened here? Because again, the media is saying that this was some kids going over to egg somebody's house and it was a prank and it just went horribly wrong. But I personally feel like there might be something else going on here, which we'll get into. But once you hear all the details of this case, let me know what you think. Now, with all of that said, come gather around and let me tell you the story of the horrible murder of 22-year-old Tyler Lane. Our story begins on July 3rd, 2023 at about 4.45 p.m. It was at this time that Spalding County deputies responded to a call of a man shot in the middle of the street in the 100 block of Dobbins Mill Road in Griffin, Georgia. And when police arrive, they find a man lying dead in the street suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. So police begin processing the scene. They're gathering evidence and they're speaking to witnesses. And in doing so, they're able to learn that the man who was shot had been inside of a house that was on the street. He and a friend of his had been inside when they realized that somebody was egging the house. There was a group of people throwing eggs at the home. So he went outside to confront them. And when he did, the people scattered running to a nearby car. So he approaches the car. And this is when things just escalate so quickly because somebody who was in the car, I believe they were in the back seat of the car, all of a sudden opened fire on this man, shooting him multiple times. The car takes off and the man lies there in the street bleeding and multiple people come over to try to help him to perform CPR to stop the bleeding until paramedics get there. But once they get there, they find that it is too late and the man has passed away. Now, he didn't have ID on him at the time, but from speaking to witnesses and also taking his fingerprints, they were able to confirm that this was the body of Jonathan Gilbert, who went by the name Tyler Lane. And I'm going to refer to him as Tyler throughout this video. Now, from there, it didn't take police long to make an arrest. They actually made three arrests. And one of the people who was arrested and was the alleged shooter was actually Tyler's ex-girlfriend. So let's now get into how we got to this place and what we know so far. Tyler Lane was born in Plano or Plano, Texas, P-L-A-N-O, Texas, on March 28th, 2001. And he was born to parents, Johnny, who appears to have passed away already, and Monica. And he was born to a massive extended family. And in addition to his extended family, he also had tons of friends that he considered to be his brothers and sisters. And he also appears to have been very close with his mother. They have a ton of photos together. And in all the photos, they look like they really love each other. And they're smiling. They're holding each other. It seems like there's a good relationship there. From what I read, it seems that Tyler was the type of guy who was very happy. He was always smiling. He was said to have an infectious smile and the ability to make people laugh no matter the situation. He loved fishing and nature. And there's a lot of photos of him that I found out on the water. And when his, he had his celebration of life, like when his family had his funeral, his family asked that those who were going to be in attendance come and bring chairs to sit by the water or bring canoes to go out on the water so that they could sit there 
on the water, which is a place that Tyler loved, and think about how he had sort of impacted their lives. His mother said of him, and I quote, he loved big. He had a heart that was pure and big. He attended and graduated from a high school in Rockdale County before going on to get his certification as a cell tower engineer. And most recently on July 1st, 2023, he, Tyler, was baptized at the Como River in Austin, Texas. And this, his baptism was just days before he was murdered. So he actually lived in Texas. He was baptized in Texas and he lived in Texas at this time, but you may notice that he was murdered in Georgia. And it's because he had lived in Georgia and he had just recently moved to Texas to start over and start a new life and was just back in Georgia visiting for a week when he was killed. Now, speaking of that, speaking of him being back home in Georgia, well, not home because Texas is now home, but being back in his previous home, Georgia, uh, the reason he was there, it's not totally clear what happened, but I read that he did have a ticket and a suspended license that he needed to like obviously rectify those situations. And for whatever reason, he couldn't do it online. He needed to be present physically in Georgia. So that's why he was there and he was going to be there about a week just to get things situated, close, close all the doors, tie up all the loose ends, right? Before going and starting his life over in this new place to, you know, just have a fresh start. Now, while Georgia, he, while Georgia, now while in Georgia, he was staying with a friend and this friend was a girl named Kay. Now it's unclear if Kaylee was a romantic friend though. It does seem to be implied that it was kind of going that direction. And now that he has died, she actually wears an urn of ashes around his neck. But what's been reported for sure is that she was an old family friend and that the two had been getting a little closer in the days leading up to his murder. So when he needed to go back to Georgia to deal with this ticket, she was like, well, why don't you come and stay at my house for a week? So, you know, we can spend some time together. And so that's where he was when all of this happened. Now, it seems at least by the reporting we have so far that somebody seemed to be allegedly unhappy that Tyler and Kaylee were spending so much time together. So Tyler had dated a girl and her name was Sydney Mon, I believe is the pronunciation. It's M-A-U-G-H-O-N. And it's unclear how long they dated, how long they had been broken up or what the specifics were that caused the breakup. But Kaylee has come out and said that there was definitely some tension between Sydney and Tyler um, from the breakup. And also as Tyler and Kaylee were getting a little closer to one another. It has been described by the media as an quote, ongoing lover's quarrel, end quote, with Kaylee. And she said that in the hours and days leading up to the murders, Sydney had threatened both Tyler and Kaylee multiple times. And in doing some research and going through lots of comments from locals, because this has been like not a highly publicized case, but locally it is, you know, discussed by those who knew Tyler, knew Sydney, knew the people involved, especially because of how young they are, people are talking. I've seen comments and I've seen that there was either a DM or an Instagram post that was leaked. And I believe it was probably a DM because I don't know who would publicly post something so gross, but Sydney had said, shortly before the murder was committed, that she was going to kill Tyler and his friend, though she did not say either of these things this cleanly. She had other choice words for Tyler and Kaylee. And she said she was going to kill them and she was going to videotape it. Allegedly, because obviously things can be doctored, but it seems to line up with what's going on. That's all I'll say. So that leads us to the evening slash late afternoon of July 3rd, 2023 just two days after Tyler's baptism. He's at Kaylee's house with her. They're hanging out inside her place, doing whatever. When they get some visitors, this is 18 year old Sydney Mon, and she shows up with two more people. This is 18 year old Jeremy Munson and 19 year old Mackenzie Davenport. They show up at Kaylee's home on Dobbins Mill Road at around 4.30 p.m. with what they say is the plan to just egg this house to be, you know, annoying. So they get out with their eggs and they start throwing eggs at Kaylee's home. Inside, Kaylee and Tyler realize what's happening and then Tyler realizes who is doing this. So he decides to go outside and tell these three to get fucked. But what's most important here is that he goes out unarmed. Now in seeing Tyler come out of the house, the three scatter and they run back to a car, you know, a car that was parked nearby that they had driven up in and Tyler follows them. And then what happens next is alleged because I haven't said this yet, but they haven't gone to trial yet. But allegedly as he approached the car, Sydney, his ex-girlfriend who was sitting in the back seat, pulled out a gun and shot at him multiple times. 
Now, Kaylee said in an interview, because remember, she was there, so she heard this, probably saw this, but she says what she believes happened is as he approached the vehicle, Sydney shot him in the chest. And then as he turned either to like run away or just in like the shock, the momentum from being shot in the chest, that she then shot him in the neck. Now, this was at least partially confirmed because the coroner did come out and say that the manner of death here was homicide, which is obvious, and that his cause of death was one of two gunshot wounds to his chest. So he's shot and he lays there in the street for 10 minutes crying and begging for his life while he waits for help to arrive. But this note just really pisses me off before they leave, but after they shot him. Uh, one of them allegedly took a video of Tyler laying in the street bleeding. And supposedly this video circulated on the internet from what I've seen from his family, it circulated on the internet and it has since I believe been taken down. I did not see this video, but on top of that, Jeremy allegedly got out of the car went up to Tyler and ripped a necklace off his neck that contained Tyler's father's ashes. And this is especially sad because not only did Tyler's father die, and I believe that this was fairly recent. Like, I don't think it happened when he was a kid, just based on like photos and posts that I saw online. I think it was something in more recent years. Not only did his father die, but his father died in a very similar way in the street. Because from what I've seen online, Tyler's father was killed by police and at least in Tyler's opinion, this was an unjustified killing. And that after the fact, police tried to make his father seem like a monster to make it seem justified for them to do what they did to him. Now, I didn't look into this fully. I don't know much about that case, but I can tell you that this is what he believes and this is what he thinks happened. So for that to happen to his father and then this similar type of thing to happen to him and then this guy to just rip the ashes off his neck, it's just just such a slap in the face. So after all this, after the shooting, after taking the video, after stealing the ashes, they then left him there to bleed to death in the street. But he wasn't totally alone, thankfully, because remember Kaylee was there. Other people who like lived on the street, heard what happened, saw what happened, came out to help him, tried to resuscitate him, keep him awake. One man was there just to hold his hand. And his mother said that she believes that this was God because well, I can't say because, but she thinks that this was God's way of making sure even though her baby was going to die, he wasn't going to die alone. So anyways, police get there. They talk to witnesses and in talking to the witnesses, they were able to speak to one witness who helped police quote, create a direct link between victim and suspects. Basically one witness who hasn't been named, but I believe this was probably Kaylee was able to give police information, tell them what they saw, tell them what they knew. And from this police seemed to very quickly narrow in on some very specific suspects. They just seemed to have a very specific point of view when going into this investigation. So they found a phone number. They were able to get the phone number that was linked to one of the suspects. And this phone number was linked to Henry County. So then they contacted police in Henry County to tell them what was up. And then Henry County sent out police officers to just kind of drive around in a specific area to see if they could find these specific suspects. So Henry County police search until they find a vehicle, a specific vehicle that was linked to a specific suspect. They don't say which one. And it was parked at some home, whether it be an apartment complex or a house that wasn't clear. But in finding that car, they were able to get search warrants issued for both the car and this home. And when they searched the car and this home, they found that this vehicle was the one used during the crime, like when it was committed and in searching the home, they were able to find a gun that they believe was the gun used to murder Tyler. And from there, police quickly arrested 18 year old Sydney Mon, 18 year old Jeremy Munson and 19 year old Mackenzie Davenport. The Sunday after his murder, Tyler's family had a celebration of life for him and his family was surrounded by a ton of people who came to Indian Springs State Park to remember Tyler and his life. They were just so heartbroken because it truly felt that Tyler was moving in the right direction and taking steps to improve upon his life and to like go in a positive direction when it was just stolen from him. His mother came out and said like, this is the type of thing that no parent should ever have to go through. And she's going through this as a solo parent. She's not alone because she has family. She has friends. She has Tyler's friends that came and like hugged her. It was very, I saw photos that made my heart ache, but she's doing this as a solo parent because Tyler's father was also killed. She referred to him as her little tie bug. And she said she's going to miss his big smile and his big blue eyes. And she said of her pain around losing her son, quote, 
I have a hole in my soul and in my spirit that will never be filled. She has come out since this and just said that like kids in this generation need to realize that life is real, that this is real, that what you're doing is real and the consequences are real and the pain and sorrow you create with doing these types of things is real. And Tyler's grandmother, this is Pamela, she said of this and I quote, it's just senseless. And I say, you know, just put the guns down and talk to each other. Everyone across the board just seems to be like the sentiment here is shock and heartbreak. Like the Spalding County Sheriff's Department, I believe, extended their condolences to the family and told the public like they will do everything they can to get justice in this case because everyone's in kind of disbelief. Like all of Tyler's friends, and he seemed to have a ton of friends, are just shocked that this happened. And he's so young. I know I keep saying man, but like 22. Is that really like, I know it's a man, but is it a man? Like, I feel like that's a child probably because I am so old, but <laughs> it's just, it's just like, it's just maddening because he is so young and this is so stupid. One of his friends said, quote, I am so heartbroken that you were gone. I don't even have the words to express what I feel. Just know that I love you so much. I know you would have done so much good with your life. And another said, quote, Tyler Lane was a truly wonderful young man and he loved with all his heart. He will be forever missed. The world won't be the same without him in it. So the three were arrested and they had different charges. Mackenzie Davenport was charged with malice murder, battery, and criminal trespass. And as for Sydney and Jeremy, they were both charged with felony murder, malice murder, aggravated assault, possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime, battery and criminal trespass. And as for Sydney, her battery charge was also committed. What was also no considered a crime of family violence, which I'm not sure why it would be family violence, maybe because they had dated before and it's considered sort of like domestic violence. I'm not sure if you're from Georgia and you know the, the laws out there better than me, which you probably do if you know anything, uh, because I don't know much about Georgia laws. Please let me know down below. Now, it's been kind of a controversial take that Jeremy and Mackenzie are being charged with murder and like malice murder because they weren't the ones who shot the gun, right? But the sheriff came out and said, like, listen, I, th people believe that he's trying to make a statement and make, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Make an example out of these two because they went along with this, right? They went with Sydney. It sounds to me if she was in the backseat, like this wasn't even her car. I don't know for sure. Don't quote me on that. But they went knowing there was tension, knowing threats had been made because they were made publicly and probably maybe knew she had a gun and they still went along with this and this happened. You know what I mean? Like they were there and it's a really big deal because if they are convicted of malice murder or intend to kill, because I did look this up and Georgia law defines malice murder as quote, when a person unlawfully and with malice aforethought either express or implied causes the death of another human being, end quote. And if they are found guilty of this, they could be sentenced to life in prison or even the death penalty, which I think is why it's kind of controversial because they are so young and they didn't pull the trigger. So to think of them getting life in prison or the death penalty is hard for some people. But the sheriff said of this decision, quote, because they all plotted and planned together and traveled to the location with the intent to commit a crime that led up to the murder together, they are all culpable, just as if they had each pulled the trigger themselves. Together, they bought that ticket, and now together, they can ride that ride. So where are we now? All three have been arrested, obviously, and it seems that all three have been denied bond. It looks like Sydney and Jeremy had their hearing, like their bond hearing first, with Mackenzie following... Mackenzie following Mackenzie's hearing coming a month later, and they were all informed that they weren't going to, they weren't going to get bail. They're going to sit in jail while they await trial. Now, Sydney and Jeremy were a little stone faced when they learned they weren't going to get out of jail, but Mackenzie seemed to have a pretty hard time with it. She physically cried. She audibly cried. And I feel like it's probably because she feels like she has more to lose by having to sit in jail and wait for trial. And that's because it appears that this girl is a mother herself, which how you do something like this, as a mother yourself and like put yourself in a situation where you could be taken away. Cause Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. I have a little baby. So it makes me so sad to think about for everything. Not that I feel I'm getting off on a thing. Not that I feel particularly bad for her, 
because she did something fucked up. But I'm like, how do you put yourself in a position where you're not going to be around your kid? Because it looks like her, her kid's little. And to miss all that, like so much can change in such a short amount of time with a baby. So I'm like, wow, that's fucking dumb. But then I'm like thinking about Tyler's mom who's lost her baby forever. And I'm like, you guys are all fucking idiots. I'm sorry, but that shit just pisses me off. So right now, that's where we are. We are just awaiting trial while the three of them sit in jail without bond. Tyler's mother, Monica, is glad. She's glad they're not getting out, and she hopes that they take this time to think about the fact that they killed Tyler and to think about everything that they've taken from her. She has said that God is helping her through her grief, and that, along with a urn of her son's ashes around her neck, is how she's getting by. And with that, that, my friends, is the story of the tragic murder of 22-year-old Tyler Lane so far. I hope that you found my telling of this to be informative, and I hope it made sense. And of course, I just want to thank you for remembering Tyler with me today. And I really hope that we do get justice for Tyler, because this is just such just shit, man. Now, considering everything I told you throughout this video, I want to revisit the question of the day. And I have a couple here. One, what do you think really happened here? Actually, I guess I don't have a couple. I just have some expanding on this question. And it's like, what do you think happened here? Because an egging gone wrong doesn't feel right to me. A prank gone wrong doesn't feel right to me for a couple of reasons, which one, why would she, if this Instagram post is real, why would she post that she was going to kill him and record it? And then why would I see his family say that there was a video that was recorded and circulating? So why would you do that if you were just going to go and egg this house? And two, why would you bring a gun? None of this makes sense. I feel like this could have been more of a planned situation. So let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Anyways, guys, before you leave, please don't forget to leave me a comment down below with what case you'd like to see me cover in the future. As you know, I have a long list of cases. Whenever you leave me a suggestion, I put it on my list with your name next to it. So if I cover it, I can give you a shout out. I know you're filled with good ideas and good taste. Otherwise, you would not be here. If you haven't already, please don't forget to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out a new video every single week, sometimes two a week, and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you, specifically you, but I can only hang out if you join the Brat Pack and become one of us. And if you want to hang out more consistently, all my social media is listed down below for your convenience, along with the link to my membership, where you get early access to non-sponsored videos, priority comment responses, things like that. And now with all of that said, I just want to thank you for being here when you could literally be anywhere else in the world. That is tight. You are tight. Please stay safe and be a better person than you were yesterday, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.